And now what do I do? Is something wrong? Wrong? Huh. My meeting ran over time, and now the bank's closed. That's what's wrong. I can't deposit my paycheck. I haven't got any money. That's what's wrong. Oh, I see you don't use EFT. EFT? Use it, I don't even know what it is. Well, EFT is a new way that banks, savings institutions, and others uh, offer to transfer money electronically without the need for checks and other paper. For example, if you used EFT, you wouldn't have to race to the bank to deposit your paycheck. Your salary could be credited directly to your account automatically. It could? And you could even withdraw cash from your account when your bank is closed, say, uh, on Sunday or even at night. And your bank could even pay some of your bills for you, too. Lots of other businesses are using EFT now, and you might even be able to pay for groceries at the supermarket just by inserting a card into a terminal. David? Oh, Mary, uh, honey, I got here after the bank closed. Oh, no. I couldn't help it. Uh, but this man was uh, just telling me something about a new... I'm sorry, this is my wife, Mary. Oh. E. Frank Truesdale. Uh, EFT stands for Electronic Fund Transfer, which, uh, as I was just telling David, signals a whole new way of banking where things happen electronically. Electronically? Well, I'll explain everything, but uh, first, shouldn't we go someplace a little less public? How did you do that? Well, I simply used electronics. How fabulous. This must be a bank vault. An appropriate place to talk about banking, don't you think? Now, when you think of a bank, what comes to mind first? Money. Lots of money. Like this? <laughs> yeah, cash. <laughs> but did you know that in this country, more spending is done with another kind of money? <laughs> Checks. <laughs> Checks and other paper payment orders. Americans write billions of them every month. I'm not surprised. Checks are a lot safer than cash. I know I don't like to carry a lot of cash with me. And they're a lot more convenient. Instead of traveling around to five or six different places every month to pay bills, we just write checks and drop them in the mail. But checks weren't always as efficient as they are today. That's why when Congress created the Federal Reserve System in 1913, one of its jobs was to improve the nation's check clearing process. This is the Federal Reserve Check Processing Center. And these are checks and other payment instruments. And overnight, the Fed will sort them and ship them out to be collected. Now here's where the sorting is done. By machines which can read the magnetic ink numbers imprinted on each item. Is this just one day's worth? Just one day's worth in just one Federal Reserve processing center. Why, there must be thousands. <laughs> Millions. Each one of these machines can sort almost 100,000 checks an hour. Wow, that's some job handling all that paper. That's one of the toughest jobs I know. It does seem as if we should be able to figure out a better way to transfer money, doesn't it? It sure does. What have you done? All the checks have disappeared. How will all those people be paid? Don't relax. The checks have gone. But the instructions to pay are still right here. Where? Right here. In that thing? Uh, this thing, as you call it, is a reel of magnetic tape. This one tape can hold all the payment instructions for all those checks that you just saw. It doesn't seem possible. Oh, think electronically, my boy, electronically. Think of automated clearinghouses processing these transactions with the speed of electricity by moving electrons instead of paper. The Federal Reserve supplies the facilities for dozens of these automated clearinghouses and links them together with electronic communications. The automated clearinghouse network is the nerve center of this new way of handling money and banking, uh, electronic fund transfer, or EFT. And it all works without using paper. No paper? You mean no checks? Oh, EFT is a lot more than just an alternative to checks. It can give you round-the-clock banking, uh, automatic bill paying, uh, cashless shopping, uh, direct deposit. Is it hard to use? Oh, on the contrary, it's easy. And here's something that helps make EFT better for you. Regulation E. It's a set of rules and regulations drawn up by the Federal Reserve at the order of Congress to protect people like you and help you get the most out of EFT. But uh, rather than talk about this, let's take an electronic trip uh, through some of the most common EFT services. I'll explain the Federal Reserve regulations as we go along. We'll start with the most familiar EFT service. It's the automated teller machine.
most of these machines have easy to remember names, but no matter what they're called, they're a part of EFT. Now let me understand. If we get an EFT access card, we can use it at any one of your automated teller machines, even when the bank is closed? That's right. Around the clock, seven days a week. And we can make deposits and withdrawals? Yes, and you can even make loan repayments, transfer funds from one account to the other, and possibly even find out the current balances in your accounts. That's great. Can we withdraw any amount of money? Our limitations on frequency and amount. There are limits, of course. And that's one of the things that the Federal Reserve says you must be told in writing about your EFT access card. Now, you must be told about the other terms and conditions, too. Now, if you'll just read this carefully, it shows the types of transactions you can make. It also gives our business days, explains how and where to report errors, what to do if your card is lost or stolen, and what your liability is for the unauthorized use of your card. Well, seems pretty clear. Good. Now, I suggest you put it in a safe place for a ready reference in the future. And you may want to take advantage of our other EFT services, too. Oh? Like bill paying services. You can call us and tell us whom and how much to pay, and we'll take care of it for a small charge. Or you can arrange to have us pay your recurring bills for you. All you have to do is sign a special authorization form. But what if we want to stop you from making a payment? Tell us. That's all. Tell us in writing or orally. At least three business days before the date of the transfer. Well, what do you think, honey? Should we let EFT pay our bills? I guess so. Only, what proof will we have the bills are paid if we don't have the canceled checks? A very natural question for Mary to ask. But the Corries will have proof, because the Federal Reserve requires that they be sent regular statements that describe all the transactions in their account. In order to use your EFT access card, you will need a personal identification number. We call it your PIN. In a few days, you will be receiving an access card like this that you can use with your secret number as a safety precaution against other people using your card fraudulently. Isn't it nice having an automated teller machine right here in the shopping center? It's like having a personal money machine. And it's a relief not to have to worry about getting to the bank before it closes on payday. Don't forget the receipt. Federal Reserve regulations say a receipt must be offered for any transaction at an EFT terminal. I lost it. Uh, something wrong? I can't seem to find my EFT access card. Are you sure? I looked in every pocket. Well, don't panic. Just call your bank now and uh, report your card missing. That's right. According to the Federal Reserve regulations, if you notify the bank within two business days of discovering your card is lost or stolen, the most you can be liable for is $50 in case anyone else uses your card. Are you sure? Yes, but if you don't notify them within two days, your liability could be much higher. Would you have change for a dollar so I can make that call? Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's on me. Thank you. Boy, am I glad we read those rules before we got our access card. Thank you, Mr. T, wherever you are. I'm right here in a friendly neighborhood supermarket. More and more stores like this are beginning to accept EFT payments. So you may be able to use your EFT card instead of cash to make purchases. But remember, your EFT card is not a credit card. Every transaction you make will affect your account instantly. September 28th, mortgage payment, $562. October 3rd, automated teller withdrawal, $180. David, I don't remember making any withdrawal of $180. Do you? Hmm. What $180 withdrawal? Here on the statement from the bank, October 3rd, automated teller withdrawal $180. Well, what do you know? There must have been a mistake. I'm going to call them and clear it up right now. Of course, mistakes can be made. But you're protected. Because the Federal Reserve regulations say that if your bank cannot resolve the problem within 10 business days after you notify it, it must return the disputed amount to your account while it continues the investigation. Hey, come in here. <laughs> Dad, you're soaked. Let me get your towel. You picked a bad time to go visiting, Dad. Well, that's not exactly what brought me out, son. Actually, my social security check came in today, and I was walking down to the bank to deposit it, and the rain started. 
Luckily for me, you were close by. Well, you're doing things the hard way, Dad. You shouldn't be going to the bank in all kinds of weather. Why don't you sign up for the EFT direct deposit of your Social Security? That's how I get paid. And my company offers direct payroll deposit. Well, yeah, I've heard of that, but, but look now, suppose something gets mixed up. How do I know that my Social Security money was really deposited? Well, in the first place, Dad, electronic fund transfer is a lot safer than a check that could get lost or stolen or delayed in the mail. Each month, the Social Security Administration puts payment instructions on a magnetic tape that goes to an automated clearinghouse. And there it's sorted onto another tape just for your bank. And this tape goes into your bank's computers, and your Social Security payment is credited to your account electronically. But how do you know they did it? Well, the bank has to provide a way to verify your deposit. And also, it'll show up in your regular bank statement. Now, my employer gives me a stub as verification. <laughs> I guess you're right. After all, I'm the one who's all wet. <laughs> How about a cup of coffee to warm you up? <laughs> Great. EFT becomes more convenient the more you find out about it, doesn't it? And as time goes by, EFT is going to be providing even more helpful services to you. For example, you probably already have one of these in your own home. Well, someday, before long, you're going to be able to use your touchtone phone to call a store and have them show you on your own home television screen all the items that are on sale that day. And someday before long, you're going to be able to order merchandise from the store through your phone and pay for it by phone. And that's what makes all the difference. Pay for it. All through your touchtone phone. Now that's a bargain. Hold that one. Can we afford it? Well, I think so. Let me check our balance. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's buy it. That's someday. But why talk about someday? <laughs> the future is already here. And with electronic fund transfer, you can buy and pay and bank with the speed and convenience of electronics. And with an assist from the Federal Reserve's Regulation E, you can use EFT with safety and confidence. <laughs>